All right. Welcome. This is Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. It's the 7th day of June, 2024. Thanks for being here. Today's topics, weekly release. Uh, weekly in two weeks that will be requiring Java 17. And we'll look at a pretty graph to show us why that's such a good thing. The switch from Jetty 10 to Jetty 12 as part of the Spring Security Upgrade to Spring Security 6. The switch from Jetty 12 EE8 to Jetty 12 EE9. The next LTS release. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Google Summer of Code projects. And Chris, I assume you'll be the one who'll talk to us about that one and any others you want to, to highlight. Okay, sure, yeah. Contributor Spotlight. We could also insert version doc site here, Chris, if you would like some time to talk about the version doc site. Yeah, we're good, yeah. Okay, so let me grab some initial notes from that, and we'll grab the old notes, put them in, and include them in our agenda. Okay, good. All right, so how about there? Is that okay? Um, I think for the contributor spotlight, do we have a, that was good, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yep. All right, so first item, weekly, built and released as expected. Nicely done. Next piece is that we've got upcoming very soon, less than two weeks from now, Jenkins Weekly will require Java 17. Uh, thanks to Basil Crow, thanks to Tim Jacome, we've got agreement on the developer list that it's okay to do, do Java 17 early because there is so much work to be done as part of the Spring Security upgrade. Spring Security 6 is a major change, and it's there's an awful lot of work we've got to do to, to get that upgrade done successfully in time for an eventual October 30th LTS of Java 17 plus Spring Security 6. So the next LTS baseline will actually be chosen from a version built prior to June 18th because the next LTS baseline still must continue to support Java 11. And there's this really cool chart that shows our progress on getting people to use new Java versions. This is now updated once a week, thanks to Basil Crow's work. The green line shows Java 8. Mm. Notice the peak is about 2020, right? Mm. Then if we look at Java 11, it hit its peak in about 2023. And Java 17 is at or near 100,000 installations. So very, very good progress on getting people to adopt Java 17. Uh, part of it, I think, is that we warn them and have warned them for months now that Java 11 is going away in September. And the most recent weeklies actually adjusted that warning to say that it's going away in June. Ah. So, yeah, it's 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 great to see and delighted that it's happening. Any questions on Jenkins Weekly and Java 17? Okay, next topic then. Jetty 10 to Jetty 12. All right, so in the big picture, we've got yeah. Spring Security 6.x upgrade that's needed. Spring Security 5 reaches end of life August 31, 2024. So August 31, by August 31, they will have delivered their last release of Spring 5. That's Spring Security 5, Spring Framework 5. And they're telling users you need to move to spring six. And so as part of that, though, it means we also must transition from Jetty 10 to Jetty 12. We must transition file upload one to two. And there are several other major changes that are hiding in that. We've got to change from Java x.servlet imports to Jakarta.servlet imports. And we don't want to break compatibility. So, right, that's an enormous, an enormous challenge, right? How do you how do you do something that dramatic and not break compatibility? So, but it's looking good. 
Basel's got a prototype branch of the Jetty 10 to Jetty 12 EE8 transition working quite well. And there are three blocking issues for it. And one of them I'm working on right now. That was what I was doing earlier today. And and have understood it, I think, well enough to, to describe it. Uh, the other two need work. And we really won't merge this change, even though it's passing tests, it's looking great. We won't merge this change until we understand the root cause for these three things to be different in Jetty 12 than they were in Jetty 10. Any questions on Jetty 10 to Jetty 12? Okay, so that's phase one. Next part is phase two, which is, or that's one of the phases. Next phase is the switch from Jetty 12 configured with EE8 to Jetty 12 configured with EE9. So think of EE8 as old Java, old Java meaning Java X dot servlet imports and EE9 is new Java certain Java server Java Jakarta dot servlet imports. This one is also running and uh, it's we've got I've been running it for now about two weeks and it's looking great but there's a bunch of work that's still needed and more exploration that's still needed. Bruno Verachten has created a sample that will use this, this particular build in a container image. So if anyone wants to help test, we've got a relatively simple way for someone to start a container that is actually one of our tutorials, but uses this new Jenkins prototype build with Jetty EE9. So I I built mine using using the instructions from Bruno. Bruno noted I don't even have to include the build process. So I can if I take that argument out from his his example, it still works great. And so the note here is we need lots of exploratory testing for this. Um, while the we're delighted that the bill of materials tests pass and the automated tests pass and there are a number of ways where this thing could have a problem if we don't exercise the things ourselves to see that they're well behaved. A common failure mode is if a form accepts data from the web UI, but then does not correctly store it. And so it's not visible when you come back to the form. And the solution there is we, we have to be sure we check it. Now, many automated tests already do exactly that. And that's how Basel was able to find many, many failures and resolve them with implementation. The other thing is to watch for stack traces in the Jenkins log output. So Basel and Adrian have been doing great work. Any questions on that one? Okay, next then, Chris, we'll let you talk about LTS 2.452.2. Did you want to give us a highlight? Um, would you like to do it? Because like, I think sure. you added two, two, two backporting items. I did. And so those the backport pull request has been merged. So if if you're able to generate a new release candidate, that would be fine. I'm not overly worried if you don't, because as far as I can tell, the release candidate testers are mostly me. Yeah. Thanks, and Ryan. right now I'm intensely focused on other things. So I'm focused on the spring security work. And so I'm not sure that generating a new release candidate is a great help. I, I There may be people who say, hey, Chris, why didn't we generate a new release candidate? It's a fair question. But it's easy to get that release candidate off of the stable-2.452 CI build without having you officially publish a new release candidate. Do you do you have a preference, Chris? Do you, do you feel like we need to publish a release candidate with this new change? Uh, we don't need to, I think. Okay, great. Yeah. Super. And it's, it's looking good for passing its tests. And we'll, we'll see how things go there. Okay. Well, no, maybe it's not. Look, I'm not sure what it's doing for. Oh, it had, it had agent failures. I'm going to restart the build. 
Okay. That's what happens when you have cloud agents that sometimes just don't uh, don't survive. That's the nature of an agent in the cloud. All right. So the change log and upgrade guide, I suspect, needs to be re reviewed and merged. We may want to do that today, uh, tonight, if we've got time. Next topic was version docs project. Chris, you want to give us a highlight there? Yeah. So it's like uh, we, um, I think I have just submitted a pull request um, for uh, like updating to the, the latest version um, as of uh, May 31st. And also, like, um, because, like, uh, Vendy just said, like, um, it's too much work for him to continue updating documents. So I'll take over from this point onwards. So we'll, he would just be doing, would be uh, doing bug fixing. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Well, thanks for your willingness to. So you'll keep the, the new site's content generally up to date with changes that are made on the existing site. Thank you. Thanks very much. Now, the tutorials, if I remember correctly, are not part of the version site. They are non-versioned, right? I think they should be non-versioned, but I need to double check because I think, I think like the first time around, we, we didn't check it very carefully. So um, maybe some, some of the things that should not be in the version docs, say, for example, the projects, including GSOC, should not be in the version doc, but they are in the version doc currently. So we may need to check that. Ah, okay, got it. Yeah, okay, good. So, the I don't see the two, the reason I was asking is there have been there have been very important and useful changes in the tutorials for Docker, but not yet in this main install page for Docker. Yeah, because like the PR is not reviewed yet. I think it's like Kevin has some issues recently this week, so he hasn't gone around to it yet. Right. Oh, oh, I see. So your pending PR is yeah. is ah. Got it. Yes. And Kevin's been ill this week. So, so no shock that he's not, not able to do reviews. Yeah. Great. All right. Anything else you'd like to highlight on, on the version doc site? So the, is, is Vandit working the idea of when do we switch from the prototype 2.426 to, mm -hmm. to newer versions, or is that something that will happen later? Um, you mean to update this version? Right. Oh, it's, it's done in the PR, same PR too. Oh, it is. Okay. So it's already in that pull request. Oh, so now does that mean I could see that on the pull request preview site? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So are you all right if we go look at that? Yep. Sure. Okay. So let's look at the pull requests and. Uh, it's at the bottom feature update contents. Okay, sure. good. All right. And then the preview site is view reviewed changes. Not that no, one. no, that's the wrong one. Sorry. Bottom, bottom. Bottom, bottom. Way down here. Uh, view uh, deployment. Yep. Or show environments. In either case, view deployment. Okay, good. Uh, no, I don't mean Jenkins.io. All right, so let's look at the, I think. I'm not sure what is it? Yeah, this okay. This one's still the same as, and and that's expected. This page has not changed. I'm I'm trying to think of one that has changed recently. We haven't had a bunch of changes in this. So, well, the, this is the. It's great. The so the preview site looks good already, Chris. And let's see, should there be something in the Linux environments? No, not yet. Okay. Yeah. All right. L looking great, Chris. Anything you wanted to, anything else you want to highlight there? I think it's like Vendit is not going to say this morning. So Vendit will be just he's back. He's, he's like he will work on bug fixing only. Good. All right. Uh, Chris has taken responsibility for content synchronization, right? from the upstream site, from the official site, yeah. our current site, whatever. Good. All right. Oh, oh, wait a sec. We were going to look at the version and there it is. Okay, Chris. So clearly 2.452.x, that's, that's exactly what you said. Yeah. Okay. And so then if I look at 
Nice. Okay, so the even the even the pieces that are not version dependent are showing up. So if I look at developer documentation, because that's that's intentionally not version dependent. It is in the version doc for some reason. Oh, it remember. is. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Because I think they did ideas to 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 like include that in the version docs. Okay, and and I guess at some level that certainly makes sense. That it's reasonable to say, hey, we should. Oh, look. Okay, there. That's what I was missing. So here we've got tutorials do have a version number. Okay, so let's see if this one. Let's see if this one has the latest content. This is great. Okay. Fork and clone. Star Trek. Yes, it does. Oh, very good, Chris. Okay, this is this is a dramatic improvement. Okay, this this set of three statements yep. replace all sorts of other darkness that is in the <laughs> in the which page in the user documentation under installing Jenkins Docker. And I mean, this is serious darkness yep. right here. So it only takes what 15 steps with yeah. these terrible horrible monster things that you have to do yeah. and you still don't quite end up with the thing that you might have wanted okay. so okay. so th this one ends up with oh you've got docker and docker configured inside your container image even though the security people tell you that's a really bad choice <laughs> and, and so we've Bruno's work has has fixed that, but he's not yet ready to deploy it to the main install page. So the tutorials were first target. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Confirm that the new content is visible. Thanks very much, Chris. Anything else you'd like to highlight? I think that like I'm targeting like updating every month from, from this point onwards. So for now, at least until um, before we transition. Super, thank you. And is that is that a task that you'd be willing to take some help on, or you'd rather not have help at this stage? Uh, I think I'm okay. Okay, great. Super, excellent. Next topic then, Google Summer of Code. So we've got one that is clearly documentation centered on improving the, implementing the UI for the Jenkins infra statistics. Yeah. Uh, Chris, anything you want to share on that one? Um, that one we're gonna have a meeting with Harvey from the uh, infra team to discuss how to work on the logistics for fetching data. Ah, okay. That's a, that's a, like, that's a new blocker for now. So when that's out, we won't have any new blockers. Good. Thank you. All right. And midterm presentations still, still on plan for July 11? Yep. Great. All right. Next topic then was contributor spotlight. I and Jan, oh, go ahead. And it just went out yesterday. Oh, did it? Oh, yeah. oh, wait a sec. I've got to check this. Yeah. Okay, so Vandits has not been merged yet. So his this okay. was published the twenty second. What's right. our calendar like? Are we two weeks since the twenty second? We yeah. are. Okay, so so Kevin's being out is disrupting our publication schedule here. Yeah, I thought, I thought it was merged yesterday because I wasn't sure. Oh, oh well. So let's let's take a look and see. Okay, that we should be able to see on the on the contributor spotlight. But I don't see it though. Let's see. GitHub.com slash Jenkins dash. Is it in Docs where the contributor spotlight uh, is? Contributor spotlight. I think it's called contributor contributor spotlight. So, but is it in Jenkins Infra, Jenkins Docs? Jenkins Infra, I think. Ah, okay. Got it. Yeah. Contribute. Come on, Mark's typist. 
There we go. Okay, we'll pick one, one pull request. Okay, so what you were saying is that we've had a pull request merged. Oh, yeah, there it is. Merged yeah, 15 hours a... ago, but not visible. Yeah, it's strange. Okay, so let's take a look here and see if the it's if visible on the preview. It is. Okay. Yeah. All right. So so now we've got to raise a question to the to the infra team. I'll let's just open the open an infra ticket while we're here. Yeah. Okay, so infra help desk. New issue, uh, get start, let's see, documentation. All right, so missing contributor spotlight update, update for Vandit Singh. Uh, was merged about 15 hours ago, but is not yet visible. at at where did I put it at this location yeah okay and there's some way to tell it give me a really refresh page yes okay there it is good okay all right um Okay, submitted. Okay. Thanks for catching it. That's good. Okay, so Vandit, Vandit Singh published earlier this week, uh, 15 hours ago. Not yet visible. Opened to ask for help. Good. Excellent. Okay. So, and the response from Vandit is there. Uh, we have a reply. We have a story from Ray Jeff, though. Oh, you are waiting for one or you have one? We we have one. So oh, good. Have, All right. We ask one. Yeah. Great. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. That's very good. All right. And I had a suggestion that I, I need to discuss with Kevin when he's back. I think Darren Pope would be a good one to include as a as a contributor. I think so. Oh yeah. His his videos are are amazing. And uh no, it's not a lot of code, but it's it's a bunch of a bunch of very very useful content. And they are spread throughout our documentation. I agree. Great. All right. So there's another new feature coming, Chris. Maybe you can share more with us about this new feature and the idea. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The the um the thank you, thank a random contributor page. Right. A, not a page, but a feature. Just mm -hmm. um, it's, it's kind of like this um, item right here. So we just can thank you, a random contributor for making so and so contributions to uh, whatever we post within Jenkins. It's kind of, it's quite similar to this one. So we, we show the avatar, we show the username on GitHub. If they have a phone name, we're gonna show that too. Excellent. Thank you. That's great. And and I understand that John Mark believes he's got the data ready. Yep. And so next step I think was you now are you going to implement this as a static a static content that's in embedded in the generated page, or is it dynamically extracted from other source it's going to be static i think but good we're going to have good i like pull. static sites thank yeah. you yeah we're going to pull in the data <laughs> every, every 12 hours okay so sync up with what um show mark has in terms of data thank you yeah i know this page this particular page the example actually uses does that does it dynamically but it makes me nervous to yeah. put dynamic dynamic pages on on Jenkins. Let's 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 yeah. stick with a static site generator. Yep. Good. All right. Anything else you want to highlight on that, Chris? Nope. It should be ready in two weeks. Oh, okay. Good. 
hope to be ready in to be ready in two weeks. All right. Meg, were there any other topics you wanted? I saw that you'd submitted a, a recent change. Um, yeah, and I have actually could we look at um forty seven oh one? It's really sure. interesting looking at PRs that you did two and a half years ago. All I've right. forgotten stuff and there's been a history. I need some forensics help here. Okay, let's look at it. So Jenkins.io and tell me the pull request number again. It was 4701. 4701. Wow, that's almost halfway through the numbering scheme now. Wow. Yeah, that's a mature. Okay. So what would you like? To, what what okay. should we see? Um, we are I we're conflicted. And if we're conflicted, that means we don't get a preview, right? Correct. But okay. that's this is an easy conflict to fix, I think. So let's well, how we fix the conflict. Well, no, no, no. You go no. in like you're going to resolve. The problem is what it looks like, and I don't remember this, so I don't know if I had it. It looks like there's something in there that had some graphics, probably some architecture graphics or something. And then somebody, oh, wait a minute. That's not the one. There we go. Somebody, they're all three of these, I think, or all of them. That doesn't look like what I'm seeing. Wait a minute. Um, but what I'm seeing is we've got a conflict with some text, which I think came from a wiki. I know I did not write it. There's a couple of things in there that give it away. Okay. Um, and against graphics, and it's sort of like the script says choose one or the other, or, of course, we could use both of them. Um, okay, yeah. And well, I right. want to know what's in those graphics. Okay, so, so this one, this one is invalid an invalid url so we'd need to fix that one okay but but it's an easy fix all we have to do is take out this little bit okay so that's what that's I an easy know fix is what the graphic looks like to know if we even want it right right it and may i be think some piece of crap that i pulled from somewhere because i had nothing else and then now that we've got this good prose we don't need that picture and and, and that that i think is a a, a very good question so let's if you're okay with it, let's bring it up. We'll get the site started and take a look at it together. Okay. All right. So let's look at, this is PR 4701. And so I'm just going to bring up my friendly local terminal emulator and we're going to do some development live here. Okay. So, <clears throat> um, and I'm, I'm not going to be terribly considerate of everything else sorry if you can't see the text i'm typing etc yes we can do. all right yeah, yeah you you so. being rude is still pretty polite you know <laughs> okay all right so let's check out that pull request okay git merge master okay we get two conflicts the two conflicts are here. Let's take that one first. All right. So here we want to keep the credentials page. And I would think we want to also keep controller isolation okay. like that. Okay. All right, so we add that. Now let's get the next one. So if we do get status, it will tell us there's only one file conflicted, and this is the big conflict. Okay, and reading conflicts in ASCII doc is extra difficult because we use characters frequently. All right, so this text goes right here and this just like that okay that part i'm comfortable because this is an example of how to st whoops except we're missing the end block on the code sample Oops. there okay so now we have a code fragment and then Yeah, okay, good. Protect, okay, so this 
store user credentials as secrets is a piece of advice. Implement appropriate script security is another piece of advice and then provide role checks. So that I think resolves that conflict. Okay. Now let's look here. All right, so now this one is, all right, now this one is, okay, to protect against this, Oh, oh, got it. So what what this is an example and this is text that describes the example. Uh-huh. So I think what we should do here whoops, sorry. I think what we should do here is put it into the sentence like that. Right. The colon, yeah. And now we've got the source block here. Okay, that one's done. Okay. Now let's look at the next one. Okay, so here it was C securely. Imp oh, okay, this one just needs to be converted like this. And then where is the end of that config? Oh. Okay, head. So where, okay, there's this. Ah, got it. It's a very big block of text that was added. Yeah. Got it, okay. So I think I think that's resolved it. Oh, okay. I think so. Now let's look at it and see. So what we're going to do is we're going to go out and look at the diffs. Good. Now let's see the cache diffs. Okay, so in the cache diffs, we it's adding this example code and this exam oh oops and this example code. And I think those are coming from the master branch. Okay. And this one. Yes. That looks reasonable to me. Oh. Do you want to push that? Well, just a minute. Let's do a git commit. Okay, git status. Now we're going to do a make run. Let's look at it. So git diff master says the thing we've changed is we've added controller isolation required role check as a new section. And... And now that's interesting. That should this would usually mean it's a new file, but I don't see. Well, let's go. Let's go look at it and see. This is ah okay right. Required role. Required role check. There it is. Okay, link to it. And there's the hmm. So we're going to have to look further, Meg. Let's do a make okay. run and see if it see how it looks. Yes, this this certainly isn't as as pleasant and pretty as the experience using the new docs.jenkins.io site generator. <laughs> and Tora does does all sorts of nice things. Okay, while that's waking up, I'll open up a web browser to this location. There we go. Okay, so here is the generated site. Now we need to find the places where it's changed. So this was securing Jenkins. Yes. And required role check security improvement. 
Okay. Now I th I need to see the the existing site just to be sure I understand it, but I think that's the brand new page, isn't it? Oh, it may be. I have to. It's just weird sure. looking at something this old. <laughs> sure. Yes. Okay. So notice here's credentials. Uh huh. There's the credentials page, and if we look here, credentials is right above it, and then required role check security improvement. Okay. So this looks like Yeah, and it looks like it's it's rendering it's rendering the way I would have expected. Meg, I think we're ready to push it. Okay. All right. So All right, then. Push. Great. Thank and I've got you. two others that I looked at and and now I've forgotten what the issues are, but I think one a week is enough. <laughs> Excellent. I, I will prepare for next week with them, but I want to go through and make a just a quick edit on some of the pros of this, but I didn't want to touch it while it was a mess. So thank you. Thanks for doing that. Anything else you wanted to to be sure that we reviewed? Just no, um not tonight. Um one quick question. This I don't know what this security and Jetty stuff is that you're doing. Is there any chance that's going to impact the security section? Or sorry, say that again. What's going to impact the, the, the work that you're doing on the new the Jetty and the the security? Oh no, no, that's okay. uh, if, if if anything, it's it's giving at least a minor boost to security, uh, but not 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 any impact on the security documentation as far as okay, I can tell. good. I would really like to get these things merged and forget about it. It's been too long. Very good. Yeah. All right. Cool. And that's enough. I think it's after eight or after nine for you and time for. It is. Thanks very, very much, Chris. Thank you. Anything else, Chris, that you wanted to be sure?